You know what's so sad about this movie, Killers of the Flower Moon? The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa. Marrying black women so they can steal their land, get legal rights, take their property, their resources. The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa right now. So I want all my Africans, all my continental Africans, please go watch Killers of the Flower Moon. You know, you got, you got nice color skin. What color would you say that is? My color. The Osage. They have the worst land possible. But they outsmarted everybody. The land had oil on it. Black gold. Money flows freely here now. I do love that money, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this wealth should come to us. Their time is over. It's just going to be another tragedy. When this money started coming, we should have known it came with something else. They're like buzzards circling our people. I ought to kill these white men who killed my family. I need you here. I am right here. You've got to take back control of your home. I was, uh sent down from Washington, D.C. to see about these murders. See what about them? We'll see who's doing it. Expecting a miracle to make all this go away. You know they don't happen anymore. Let's get into the movie review. First of all, every African needs to go see this movie. I'm going to tell you why. Tomorrow, stop worrying about college football. Tomorrow, take your crusty asses to the theater. Every black person needs to go watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, the movie is three and a half hours long. Yes, the movie is three and a half hours long. Yes, the movie is three and a half hours long. And guess what? You need to watch every minute of it. And this is what I want y'all to do for me. Y'all ready, brothers and sisters? I want you to find a cousin, a brother, a sister, a soror, a frat, a next door neighbor, a buddy, a comrade, an associate, a co-worker, a family member who is a bunny hopper. Take them with you to the movie. And if they can't go see Killers of the Flower Moon with you, I want you to gift them the movie tickets. You can gift them the movie tickets. Get them a gift card. Say, I want you to go see this movie. I want Shannon Sharp to go see the movie. I want Terrell Owens to go see the movie. I want Tay Diggs to go see the movie. I want Chad Ochocinco Johnson to go see the movie. I want Charles Barkley to go see the movie. I want Joel Embiid to go see the movie. I want Trey Young to go see the movie. I want every bunny hopping black man and woman in America to go and watch Killers of the Flower Moon. Now, First of all, I want to send peace and blessings to the Native American community. I want to send peace and blessings to the Native American community. And in particular, I want to send peace and blessings to the Osage Native American kingdom because they were the Native American kingdom that was featured in Killers of the Flower Moon. Which is based on a true story. Which is based on a true story. Which is based on a true story. Now, let's talk about the whitewashing of Native Americans. I want black people to stay with me. I'm going to draw a parallel between what's happened to the Native Americans and what's happening to the American Africans.
I'm going to draw a parallel between what they did and are doing to the Native Americans and what they are doing to the American Africans. First of all, there are 5.5 Native Americans in America today. There are 5.5 million Native Americans in America today. There are 5.5 million Native Americans in America today. Only 20%, only 20% of the Native Americans in America today are full-blooded or nearly full-blooded Native Americans. Most of the Native American kingdom has been whitewashed through bunny hopping in interracial marriages. Most of the Native American population in America has been whitewashed through bunny hopping in interracial marriage. You're going to see when you watch the film. You're going to see when you watch the film. You're going to see that's why. When you go to some of these Native American programs, as I have, that's why when you go to some of these Native American programs, as I have, many of the Native Americans you see are almost indistinguishable from Caucasians. Many of the Native Americans you see in America, many of them are almost indistinguishable from Caucasians. Why are so many Native Americans in America today almost indistinguishable from Caucasians? You know why? Because just like black people, they thought marrying a white person was a ticket to a better life. Just like black people, they thought marrying a white person was a ticket to a better life. And the only thing it did, as you will see in the movie, and the only thing it did, as you will see in the movie, was rob them of their color, their culture, their land, their minerals, and their wealth. You must go see the movie. Because what they did to the Native Americans, the Osage Nation of Oklahoma in the 1920s, while they were bombing Tulsa, Oklahoma, they was robbing Osage, Oklahoma. While they was bombing Black Tulsa, Oklahoma, they was robbing Native American Osage, Oklahoma. While they was bombing Black Tulsa, Oklahoma, they was robbing Native American Osage, Oklahoma. Now, pretendians, pretendians, I need you to behave. Pretendians, I need you to behave, pretendians. I know you don't want to be African. I know just because you found one Native American grandparent out of a thousand, you think you're a Native American. I understand your self-hatred. But pretendians, I need you to control your Willie Lynch chip, pretendians. Just hold on, pretendians. Now, listen to these statistics. Native Americans intermarry more than any other people in America. Did y'all hear what I just said? Native Americans intermarry more than any other people in America. Native Americans intermarry more than any other people in America. In the Shoshone tribe of Wyoming, Shoshone Nation, in the Shoshone Nation of Wyoming, you have to be a quarter Shoshone in order to be a tribal member. You have to be 25% Shoshone in order to be a tribal member. Listen to me, Black America, especially my reparations people. I hope my colorblind reparationists are listening I hope my multicultural black reparations activists are listening. Listen, in the Shoshone Nation of Wyoming, 
You have to be a quarter Shoshone in order to be a tribal member. If you are less than 25% Shoshone, you cannot be a tribal member. Stay with me, Black America. I'm going to walk this dog nice and slow for those who ain't with it. Now, if you are 50% Native American and you marry somebody who is not a Native American, your child will only be 25%. Your child will only be 25%, which is the minimum percentage necessary to be a tribal member of the Shoshone and many other Native American kingdoms. Now, if your child who is only 25% native, marries outside the race, your grandchildren will have no stake, no claim, and no legal right to that Native American community. I'm going to say it again. And I hope my bunny hoppers are listening. I'm going to say it again. And I hope my bunny hoppers are listening. I'm going to say it again. And I hope my bunny hoppers are listening. In many Native American tribes, you have to be 25% in order to get access to the benefits and wealth of that tribe. So if you are 25% Native, if you bunny hop and marry somebody who's not a Native, if you are 25% native and you bunny hop and marry someone who's not native, your children will not be considered tribal members. They will get no land. They will get no benefits. They will get no resources and they will not be acknowledged as a member of the tribe. I'm going to bring this back to black America in a minute. Now, some of you all are going to say, some of you are going to say, why don't the Native Americans change their rules from people needing to be 25% Native and say you only got to be 1% Native or 5% Native? Because if they keep with the 25% rule, and their communities keep on bunny hopping out, marrying white people, diluting their genetic strength. Why not reduce the rule so the tribe doesn't grow extinct? That's your question, right? Reduce the required percentage so your tribe doesn't become extinct. Well, let's go to the Cherokee of Oklahoma. Let's go to the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. Let's go to the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma. In the Cherokee, anybody who can prove tribal descendancy, not slave descendancy pretendians, not slave descendancy pretendians, but tribal descendancy, anyone who can prove tribal descendancy from the Cherokee of Oklahoma, they can become a citizen, but the problem with the one drop rule of the Cherokees, the problem with the one drop rule of the Cherokee, the problem of the one drop rule of the Cherokee is you end up with a whole bunch of people who don't care about the Cherokee people, don't really identify with the Cherokee people, do not really feel an affinity for the Cherokee people, and they are just claiming to be Cherokee so they can get the land, the resources, and the benefits. So you see, either way, you're going to have problems no matter how you cut the cake. Now, how does this relate to black people? And I'm going to tie this on out for the night. How does this relate to black people? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why.
black people are fighting for reparations. Which we are entitled to. One second. We are fighting for reparations, which we are entitled to. But if we keep on diluting our gene pool, If we keep on diluting our gene pool and mixing with everybody but ourselves. Don't talk about my chair. I love my chair. I don't need a new one. This is my chair. I wrote my books in this chair. I'm not giving this chair up. I got my doctorate in this chair. I'm not giving this chair up, family. Focus on the message, not my chair, you superficial Negroes. We have to get serious sometimes. Now, if we keep on diluting our gene pool while we fight for reparations, we're going to be so diluted. That so many people who are not black, don't care about black people, are not loyal to black people, will be able to claim African ancestry from our forebears who arrived here as property. Because you keep sharing your enslaved African DNA through the bunny hop. You keep sharing your enslaved African DNA through snow bunny hopping. You keep sharing your enslaved African DNA through the snow bunny crisis. So you know what's going to happen in a couple of years? And I think the federal government is waiting for this. Let me tell you what the federal government is waiting on, you silly ninjas. And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Most of your YouTubian struggle streamer reparations opportunists... Most of your YouTubian struggle streamer reparations opportunists, most of your YouTubian struggle streamer reparations activists are multiculturalists when it comes to interracial marriage. Most of them support the bunny hop. Most of them have bunny hopped. And guess what? The federal government is waiting for us to dilute our pool just a few more generations. They're waiting for us to dilute our pool just a few more generations. And then when it's time to pay reparations, guess what Uncle Sam is going to say? When it's time to pay un reparations, guess what Uncle Sam is going to say? When it's time to pay reparations, guess what the U.S. Congress is going to say? You know what they're going to say? Anybody who can prove that they are the descendant of any African who is dehumanized and forced to work as a slave in America can claim equal reparations. Do you know how many people in three generations from now with all the bunny hopping we got going on? Could you imagine in 60 years, in 60 years, we're 2023. 20, let's go to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Let's go to 2093. In fact, we're not going to do three generations. Let's do two generations. Let's go to 2063. Do you know how watered down the enslaved American African gene will be? Do you know how watered down the enslaved American African gene is going to be that the government is going to say anybody who can prove that they are the descendant of a previously enslaved American African can apply for reparations? Guess what? There's more white people than black people in America. Guess what? 
There's more white people than black people in America. You're going to get in that reparations line and your mind is going to be blown away. You're going to get in that reparations line and your mind is going to be blown away by all the non-black people who are going to be able to get reparations because we kept on bunny hopping around, mixing our seed, marrying non-African people. And I'm willing to bet. I am willing to bet. I am willing to bet that more non-Africans than Africans will get reparations in America because of it. I'm willing to bet that more non-Africans than Africans will get reparations than we do. You know why? Because we spread every non-African woman you make a baby with. Shannon Sharp, please listen to me. Chad Ochocinco, please listen to me. Tay Diggs, please listen to me. Terrell Owens, please listen to me. Every woman you inject with your seed who is not an African, that baby can claim reparations. Yep. And their children can claim reparations. And their children can claim reparations. So depending on how long it takes for America to give out reparations, you're going to see lines of hundreds of thousands of pale white people with blue eyes who don't look black at all, but who can get reparations because some thirsty self-hating Negro impregnated a non-African woman and several generations down the tree, their great, 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 great 99% white grandchildren can say my great, 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 great grandma was a slave on a plantation because my great, great, great grandfather, Shannon Sharp, my great, great, great grandfather, Chad Ochocinco, my great, great grandfather, Tay Diggs, my great, great, great grandfather, Terrell Owens bunny hopped with my great, great grandma. And because of that, I get to cipher off the reparations of black people, even though I've never identified as black a day in my life, even though I've never identified as black a day in my life, even though I've never identified as black a day in my life. Excuse me, Negro. I'm not here to be friendly to nobody. I am here to wake up African people. If you have a problem with anything that I say, anything, I respectfully ask you, hop off the live right now. This is my page, my platform, my channel, my message. If you don't like it, get off the page. If you want to debate me, $50,000 for the debate. But for Uncle Shannon, I'm going to do it for free. Everybody else, $50,000 for the debate. But Uncle Shannon, I'm going to do it for free. So I'm telling you right now, interracial dating is a significant threat to the reparations payout for American Africans. Let me say it again. Interracial dating is a significant threat to the reparations payout of American Africans. Let me say it one more time for the Negroes in the back. Interracial dating is a significant threat to the payoff for reparations due to American Africans. And if we keep on bunny hopping, it's no need to fight for reparations. If we keep on bunny hopping, it's no need to fight for reparations. If we if we keep on bunny hopping, it's no need to fight for reparations because it'll all be going to white people. Now, let me get into the movie. I don't go live unless I have something to teach. I don't go live unless I have something to teach. I don't go live unless I have something to teach. I don't go live unless I have something to teach. So every black person needs to go see the film. Make sure you take all the bunny hoppers, you know, to the film. Take your nephew, your cousin, your sister, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, your frat, your soror, your... 
take every bunny hopper in the black community, male or female, take them to the movies. And when the movie is over, I want you to look them in their face and ask them, do you now understand why Dr. Umar said black people need to stick with black people and black people need to marry black people. Now that you've seen what the white man did to the Osage nation of Oklahoma, do you now understand why Dr. Umar has been trying to get us to understand that staying within your race is not about hating nobody else. It's about loving yourself, protecting your wealth. Staying in your race is not about hating no one else. It's about loving yourself and protecting your wealth. Staying in your race is about not hating nobody else. It's about loving and protecting yourself. Now, a couple points and then I'm going to let y'all go. We're talking about Killers of the Flower Moon. Every black person needs to see it, especially the bunny hoppers. This movie articulates very effectively how white people stole the wealth of the Osage Nation of Oklahoma through intermarriage and integration. The whole movie is about how white people stole the wealth of the Osage Nation in Oklahoma through intermarriage and integration. Go see the movie. So the Osage Nation discovered oil Early on in their reservation days, around the 1920s, Black Wall Street and Marcus Garvey was at their prime. Black Wall Street and Marcus Garvey was at their prime. Black Wall Street and the most honorable Marcus Garvey was at their prime. The Osage Native American Kingdom discovered oil. Overnight, they became one of the wealthiest kingdoms in the world. Overnight, they struck oil and they became one of the wealthiest nations in the world. So what did the white people do? They moved into and around the Osage Reservation. This is the 1920s. Marcus Garvey is at his height. Black Wall Street is getting ready to fight. And the white folks moved in and guess what they started doing? Killing off the Native American men, marrying the Native American women. Does that sound familiar, black America? Does that sound familiar, black America? The white men moved into Osage, Oklahoma, started killing the men and marrying the women. Does that sound familiar, black America? Does that sound familiar, black America? And guess what? Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio plays the nephew to Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro is one of these thirsty, greedy, white racists who want to get rich by robbing the Osage people blind. He convinces his nephew, Leonardo DiCaprio, to marry Molly, one of the queens of the Osage Kingdom. And so Leonardo, taking his uncle Robert De Niro's advice, plays on the emotions of Molly. He starts clapping those cheeks. She falls in love. He marries her and now Robert De Niro convinces him to start poisoning her through her insulin injections. Does this sound familiar, black America? Does this sound familiar, black America? Does this sound familiar, black America? And so Leonardo da Vinci convinces Molly 
of the Osage kingdom to marry him. So after she dies from her white husband poisoning her insulin injections. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Black people, you better go see the movie. You better go see the movie. Because y'all said, what, what Chad Ochocinco say? Love is love. Chad Ochocinco, love is love. Shannon Sharp, you just want people to be happy? Well, I want y'all to go to the movies and watch this movie and come back and tell me if love is love. So, Native American Molly of the Osage Kingdom starts getting sicker and sicker. And she's starting to think, is my husband poisoning me on purpose, trying to kill me? And so she starts telling her husband, Leonardo DiCaprio, don't give me the insulin from nobody else unless you get it off the truck. She knows something is up, but she's so in love with that white flesh. She knows something is up, but she's so in love with that white flesh. She knows something is up, but she's so in love with that white flesh. She cannot bring herself to leave Leonardo DiCaprio. And guess what? Leonardo DiCaprio and his ruthless uncle, Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio and his ruthless uncle Robert De Niro, Leonardo DiCaprio and his ruthless uncle Robert De Niro planned the murder of Molly's sister. I don't think y'all heard me. I don't think y'all heard me. Leonardo, this is a true story, you know. This is a true story, you know. This is a true story, you know. Leonardo plotted with his uncle to kill his wife's sister, the first sister. Then he plotted to kill his wife's mom. So the sister is dead, the mom is dead, and then he plotted to kill her other sister. They blew her house up. So her white husband murdered her mother and murdered both of her sisters to get the wealth, the inheritance, and the oil. And you black people running around here. And you black people are running around here. Like Chad Ochocinco talking about love is blind. When did love ever become blind? If you think I'm spoiling the movie, Get your crusty, dusty, Negro peeing ass off my life. Let me continue. These white men started adopting Native American children whose parents had died. Does this sound familiar, Black America? The white men started adopting Osage children whose parents had died. The white men started adopting children from the Osage nation whose parents had died. Does this sound familiar, black America? And they adopted the children because they knew that once the children got of age, they would inherit the wealth in the land, but the white men plan to kill the Native American children. Listen, true story, true story. The white men plotted to kill the Native American children so they could keep all the money. And then these white men took out insurance policies. They took out insurance policies. They took out insurance policies so when the Native Americans died, they would get paid and they helped the Native Americans die by pumping alcohol into the Native American community. Pumping alcohol and toxic drugs like insulin. They poisoned the damn insulin to kill the natives off.
They gave them alcohol to get drunk and cigarettes to kill the natives off. And the natives ended up with a very high diabetes rate. They ended up with a very high diabetes rate. Does it sound familiar, Black America? Does it sound familiar, Black America? Does it sound familiar, Black America? And then... And then, let me ask y'all a question. How many black men in America are married to white men, white women, who have died of suspicious circumstances? How many black male celebrities married to snow bunnies have died of suspicious circumstances. How many rich black men married to snow bunnies have died of suspicious circumstances? And then, you know what's funny? Or not so funny? Robert De Niro's real black wife in real life could not get half his money. Robert De Niro's black widow was only awarded a million dollars a year until she gets married. You know what they're counting on? They're counting on her dying, God forbid, in the next decade or so. So Robert De Niro never has to give her much money. Y'all better wake up and smell the coffee. During the movie, Robert De Niro goes to a Native American meeting where the Native Americans are talking about how they believe the white people are killing off their tribe. This is in the movie. The Native American elders and the chiefs are talking about how they believe the white people are planning their genocide. But guess what mistake they made? They allowed Robert De Niro, the main man robbing and killing them, they treated him as a friend. And guess what Robert De Niro does at the Native American meeting? Robert De Niro says, I'm going to add $1,000 to the investigation into the murder of Molly's sister's Anna. And all the Native Americans were happy and they saw Robert De Niro as a friend. But guess what? Robert De Niro worked with Leonardo DiCaprio to kill... Anna, Molly's sister. So he knows who killed her because he killed her. But he showed up to the meeting and said, I'm going to help y'all find her killer. And I'm going to add a thousand dollars to the investigation money when he was the murder. But black people love white people to be in your organizations. Y'all love white people to be in your organizations. You can't stand an organization that don't have white people in it. You better go see the movie. And guess what? One of the Native American chiefs called white people scavengers. He said, these scavengers come into our community, they rob us, they kill, they steal. They said, if this was a hundred years ago, we would go to war. He said, the problem is, we don't even know who the enemies are. And do you know what really kept them from being able to fight the white men who were robbing and killing them? Interracial marriage. They couldn't fight the enemy because the enemy was married to their sisters. They couldn't fight the enemy because the enemy was married to their aunties. They couldn't fight the enemy because the enemy was married to their daughters. They couldn't fight the enemy because the enemy was married to their cousins. And check this out. Molly's mother. Molly is Leonardo's Osage wife who he capped up. And made her think he loved her. Molly is Leonardo's old sage wife. Who he capped up. And made her think he loved her. Her mother before they killed her mother. Her mother said. Y'all keep on marrying white men. This is in the movie. The Native American queen mother said. Y'all keep on marrying white men. Y'all are turning our blood white. She said this before she died. She said, y'all keep on marrying white men and you all are turning our blood white. 
the same thing black people are doing right now. Molly's sister married a white man who helped kill her. And because Molly was diabetic, they have poisoned her so much through her insulin. They have poisoned her so much through her insulin. They have poisoned her so much through her insulin that she ultimately died. She ultimately died. And what hurts my heart is Molly never gave up on her husband until it was too late. It wasn't until the very end that she gave up on Leonardo DiCaprio. But that wasn't until they killed her first sister, killed her mother, killed her second mother, and killed her baby that she finally realized all white people, even your husband, is a racist. Even your wife is a racist. Y'all call it sick, but y'all still bunny hopping. Y'all ain't learned your lesson yet. Y'all still bunny hopping. Y'all not done. You Negroes not done. Y'all going to go ahead and keep on forfeiting your wife, to your money and your wealth to these white women who don't care nothing about you. So go ahead and keep it up. I only got 30 seconds left. I'm going to come back on the other side with a brief summary. I'm coming right back on the other side with a brief summary. So we are back for the summary. Tonight's expose on the dangers of bunny hopping in the black community. We come to the conclusion on tonight's expose on the dangers of bunny hopping in the black community. See, when I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. When I say black queens forever, snow bunnies never. Y'all take it as a joke. It's not a joke. It's a matter of life and death for the black community. Black Queens Forever Snow Bunnies Never is a matter of life and death for the black community. Black Queens Forever Snow Bunnies Never is a matter of life and death for the black community. Now, I apologize that part one was removed from my page by Mark Zuckerberg. I apologize that the first of these three segments was removed from my Instagram by Mark Zuckerberg. But I'm pretty sure one of the YouTube and struggle streamers pirated off my page before Zuckerberg took it down. I'm pretty sure one of your YouTube and struggle streamers pirated my live before Zuckerberg took it down. So I'm sure you can find it on YouTube sometime tomorrow. So you can see part two. He didn't take part two down. This is part three. Part one, where I deal with Chad Ochocinco and Shannon, Mark Zuckerberg struck that down. But I'm sure one of your YouTube and struggle streamers grabbed it off my live before Zuckerberg snatched it so you can get it off of Instagram, excuse me, off of YouTube tomorrow. So let me close out. One of the things you're going to see and learn when you watch Killers of the Flower Moon, one of the things you're gonna see and learn when you watch Killers of the Flower Moon is that Leonardo DiCaprio, the character he plays, chose his family over his wife, race first. He chose his family over his wife, race first. His uncle, Robert De Niro, convinced him not to testify against his family. He turned his back on his wife and went with his white family. And it wasn't until they killed his mixed race child. When they killed his mixed race child, that's when he finally decided to give everybody up. But until they killed his child, 
he was going to turn his back on his wife and all of his wife's family that he helped his uncle and the other white people kill. Because y'all think, well, y'all in love. Your white wife loves you more than anything. Your white husband loves you more than anything. You Negroes can keep it up all you want. And you know what's sad about this movie? Killers of the Flower Moon. You know what's so sad about this movie, Killers of the Flower Moon? The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa. The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa. The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa. Marrying black women so they can steal their land, get legal rights, take their property, their resources. The Chinese are doing the same thing in Africa right now. So I want all my Africans, all my continental Africans, please go watch Killers of the Flower Moon. All my continental Africans, please go watch Killers of the Flower Moon because I don't understand why the Nigerian government, I don't understand why the Nigerian government I don't understand why the Nigerian government hasn't passed the law banning Chinese from marrying native women. It is getting out of hand. It is getting out of hand. But guess what, black America? Guess what? The migrants that are taking over our communities, the migrants that are taking over our communities, guess what? When the U.S. government starts announcing reparations for black people, the migrants are going to start marrying black people. Oh, yes. And more snow bunnies are going to start marrying black men. Oh, yes. And more snow puppies are going to start marrying black women. I promise you. When the U.S. government announces that reparations are going to be given to African Americans and in the next couple years, you're going to see an interracial marriage explosion like you've never seen. When the U.S. government finally announces that they're going to give reparations to black people, you're going to see an interracial marriage explosion in America like you've never seen. Asians are going to start marrying black people. Migrants are going to be marrying black people, Latinos, East Indians, you name it. All the other races are going to start marrying black people. In fact, I would even argue, I would even argue that the reason we're seeing all these interracial couples on the cartoons and all these interracial couples on the commercials and all the interracial couples in the movies and all the interracial couples on TV. They're programming black people for interracial marriage. So when you get your reparations, it goes right to the other race. They're programming black people right now for interracial marriage. So when you get your reparations, it's going to the other people. They're programming black America right now for interracial marriage. So as soon as you get your reparations, it's going to go right back to the other people. They're going to start killing you and poisoning you and putting poison in your COVID shot and putting poison in your insulin and putting poison in your kidney medicine. They're going to kill you off and take your damn reparations. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Brothers and sisters, as I get ready to close. Thank you for being with me tonight from 1111 to 121. We did two hours tonight. That time went fast. We did two hours tonight. Make sure you go back and watch the whole thing. Share it with a friend. You two being struggle streamers are going to cut it up, slice it up and make money off of it and make no donations to FDMG. I said that you two being struggle streamers are going to snatch it off my Instagram, cut it up, slice it up, put it on a page, make money from my content and not donate a single dollar to FDMG. But nonetheless, the information got to get out. So I'm not worrying about that right now. Nonetheless, the information got to get out. So I'm not worrying about that. I want y'all to share this. Give it to every snow bunny you know, every snow bunny hopper in the community. 
Take them to the movies. Go see it tomorrow. But I'm telling you, if black America does not stop this interracial crisis, if y'all don't stop this bunny hopping, we are going to end up paying dearly for this and our children are going to end up paying dearly for this and our grandchildren are going to end up paying dearly for this. Clifton, New Jersey, Sunday morning, Jersey City protests against police brutality, Sunday afternoon, Nat Turner land, November the 11th in Virginia, go to natturnerlibrary.com, Chicago, Illinois, November the 16th, Norwood, Massachusetts, November the 30th. Omaha, Nebraska, December the 2nd. And we're looking at Kansas City, Kansas, December the 3rd. Where are all my Kansas City, Kansas Africans? Where are all my Kansas City, Missouri Africans? Where are my Kansas and Missouri Africans? I haven't seen you guys since 2016. I'm going to try to make it to Kansas City, Kansas or Kansas City, Missouri on Sunday, December the 3rd. I'm going to try to make it to Kansas City, Kansas or Kansas City, Missouri on Sunday, December the 3rd. So we need all of my Kansas, Missouri Africans to pull up for King Kong consciousness in Kansas City on Sunday, December the 3rd. This is your brother, King Kong consciousness. Hit the cash app. If you want a podcast interview, they are not free. If you want a podcast interview, they are not free. If you want a YouTube interview, they are not free. If you want an Instagram interview, they are not free. You can text me. Do not inbox me. I do not check Instagram inboxes. I do not check Instagram inboxes. I do not check Instagram inboxes. You can text me. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. International Africans put a one in front plus one. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight plus one. Two one five nine eight nine nine eight five eight. And don't forget Memphis, Tennessee, Black Parent Boot Camp Thanksgiving weekend. Memphis, Tennessee. Where are all my Tennessee Africans? Chattanooga, Memphis, Knoxville, Nashville. Pull up the Memphis Thanksgiving weekend for the Black Parent Boot Camp. If you need the flyers, text my phone. Y'all know the number. I love y'all. Pan-Africanism a perish. African people will win. Pray to God every day for liberation. Pull your libations to your ancestors so we can overcome. All for one and one for all. I am because we are. We are because I am. Peace and Pan-Africanism.